Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you are welcome for our midweek fellowship. And uh, we are continuing with the theme of the year, which is bearing fruits in keeping with our calling or repentance. Uh, we thank God for the series that we've been having over the weeks, actually for months now. And today, as we continue with the theme, we are going to look at the subtopic of the relationship between the vine and the branches. The relationship between the vine and the, and the branches. So, um, we are going to be reading from the book of John 15, verses 1 to 5. And I'll read. It says, I'm the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, it, it prunes, that it may, be, it may bear more fruit. Verse 3, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for this midweek fellowship jehovah god and we pray that god as we share from your word we invite your presence and we pray that holy spirit you may guide us you may teach us the truth in your word we thank you we bless you lord jesus in jesus name i pray amen so today as we look at this uh, subtopic of relationship between the vine and the branches um, I would like to say that Jesus was teaching his followers about the kingdom of God and he used figurative language. He explained something that was abstract by first explaining something that is common and easily uh, understood by, by the audience. For example, he used parables he used similes, he uh, used metaphors, he also used allegories, which is an extended metaphor. Today, uh, the passage we've, in the passage that we have uh, read, we have, uh, uh, that, that figurative uh, language is called an allegory. So what is an allegory? An allegory is a story in which ideas are symbolized as people. Ideas are symbolized as people. So in that story, we've seen that the gardener is actually God the Father. We see the vine is Christ Jesus. It's symbolized as Christ Jesus. Whereas the branches are the believers. The believers or the followers of Jesus or the disciples of Jesus Christ. So that is an allegory whereby Jesus used ideas of um, a, a vine to explain the spirit, spiritual truth um, of, um, I, I mean, um, about the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the believers. So um, when Jesus says, I'm the vine, in reality, Jesus cannot be a vine. Rather, he compares himself to the vine, while his disciples are compared to the branches. Jesus used everyday life situations to bring home or to teach spiritual truths. Many of his teachings were based on farming activities because his audience were predominantly farmers. So we know where Jesus came from. And uh, as we read the Bible, we, we see that there was... Um, the kind of farming they were doing um, uh, in that place included even um, 
farming of grapes. Grapes, uh, that's why they talk a lot about vineyard and things like that. So when he, he spoke to people about a vineyard, people instantly uh, got to understand what it means and they could relate with that. So as we look at this relationship, we want to see the role of each player or the role of each um, character in, in, in this story of vine and the branches. Uh, so we have seen that there are three characters here. And uh, one of them is the gardener. So who is the gardener? We are told it's, Jesus said, my father is the gardener. And my father here uh, is God the father. Because Jesus is God the son. So uh, we see that the God the father is the one who cares for the farm, the, the garden. Uh, so what does God do? The work of the gardener in ordinary situation is uh, to plant the crop, to do the weeding, to prune, and even to do crafting. There are some crops that need crafting. So it is the work of the gardener to do crafting, to apply manure, among other things. That's the work of a gardener. In other words, the gardener uh, does two key activities. That is to protect the crop, to clean it up or prune it so that uh, it can yield the highest crop. So in the same way, our Heavenly Father crafted us to the vine, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love that. That word is the crafting part of it is um, found in Ephesians 2 verses 2 verses 12 to 13. Ephesians 2, 12 to 13 says, it says, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Bible says we were crafted in. I mean, we know that as uh, Gentiles, we were, we were very far from God. We didn't know God. In fact, the Bible says we were a people without hope and without God. But then, because of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, we are now called God's people. We are told that um, we were not part of the covenant that God made with the Israelites. But because of Jesus Christ, who came to save the world, the world meaning all people, then we have been made part of God's people. We are now part of the family of God. So we were actually crafted in. That is now the work of the cardinal, the work of God the Father. He crafted us in to Jesus Christ. And now we belong to the family of God. Uh, so, so that is the work of, um, that's the role of a gardener, the God the Father. What about the role of the vine? The vine we've said is Jesus Christ. So, out of curiosity, I actually wanted to know more about the vine. And I did a bit of research. And I learned that one of the signature characteristics of uh, a vine is resistance to pulling and breaking. So despite that, a vine may not be a tree, a big tree, but, but as, as uh, weak as it may look, or rather not very strong, it does not easily break or it cannot be pulled easily. It resists pulling and breaking. So that is one, they say, signature characteristic of vines. They have long stems, but the branches are weak. So we've already said some of the examples of um, crops that fall in this category. We've said grapes, watermelons. And 
out of that research also, I found that the main purpose of vine is to produce fruits. Hallelujah. So even watermelons, I know all of us, we know what watermelons is. And, and we, the, the purpose of um, a vine, therefore, is just to bear fruit. Even tomatoes, that is the same thing. And grapes, too. You can Google to see how grapes look like and how it can produce so many fruits on one tree. And one vine which really doesn't look like it can carry all that fruit. So the purpose of a vine is to produce fruits. So similarly, our union with Christ is for the purpose of fr producing fruits. The scripture we have quoted is very clear, that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we may walk in them. Uh, how about the branches? The branches, which uh, we have said the branches are the disciples, our followers of Jesus Christ. So we as believers are the branches. Uh, what is the role of the branch? The branch derives its life from the vine. So without the vine, or disconnected from the vine, the branch is useless. The branch is nothing. It, uh, it cannot bear anything. It, it is dead. It is as good as dead. So the same thing with us as Christians. We need to be attached to the vine. We need to be attached to Jesus Christ. We need to be in union with Jesus Christ so that we may bear fruit. Hallelujah. So. Uh, how is this done practically? How are we supposed to be attached to Christ? First of all, it begins with salvation. Once we confess Christ as Lord, then we become one with Christ. But that oneness in Christ must be cultivated. Uh, we must have continuous or the daily fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That daily fellowship um, is cultivated through the Christian practices, the spiritual practices. One of them is through um, reading the word of God. Amen. Number two is uh, prayer. Prayer is key also. Remember Jesus Christ himself prayed like daily. Very early in the morning we, were to, we, are, we, all, we read that he went to the mountain to pray on his own. Sometimes he prayed with the disciples. So Prayer is very critical because prayer is what connects us with Jesus and with God the Father. We pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ. And so we must always pray. Uh, number three, the Bible says also, when you draw closer to me, I will draw closer to you. Hallelujah. So we must make the effort to draw closer to God. And he will draw closer to us. So it takes... It takes, um, it takes uh, purposeful um, uh, action for us to know God, to be attached or to be in union with Christ. Amen? So uh, those are some of the things that we need to do uh, to remain in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So... Um, that is the only way we will have that relationship with, with, with Christ. It is the way to also be fruitful. So may the Lord help us. And uh, in uh, the next session next week, God willing, I pray that we will learn more so that we grow spiritually. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep us. And may we continue to being fruitful and abide in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the word that has come forth to us. We give you, we give you glory and honor, my Father, that it is your desire that we abide in Christ, we remain in Christ, we remain in union with the vine, Jesus Christ. I pray that, Father, even when we are away from each other, we are not coming to church, 
that wherever we are, O oh Lord, we shall have fellowship with you. We shall have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ through prayer, through reading your word, studying your word, drawing near to you, and denying ourselves so that we may be fruitful, that we may remain in you. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us even to be fruitful. We give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.